previously on Gibrasco. I feel I should be in a more prominent place. Some of those massive spiders, they're known as orbs. And of course, with the name of Gwalia, which literally means whales. Um, how can I not go there? Uh, so, effectively, I would have done the Nullarbor in two days. Okay, so this morning we're heading for what's known as the Quabba Coast. Now, according to my lonely planet, um, it's uh, not very well known about and it's quite quiet and, you know, you go there and you, you swear you stumble across it like some secret. However, speaking uh, uh, to people I've met along the road and uh, indeed um, on Facebook chat groups, etc. It's supposed to be absolutely rammed. <laughs> so brilliant. I don't know if this is a combination of like COVID and stuff, or um, just that it was always like this. And when Lonely Planet kind of went there, it was in the off season or something. But uh, what's happening now is that uh, because of COVID, there's a lot more people on the road to see in their own country, obviously, like, like me. Um, also, um, Port Hedland and Carafa have grown considerably and people come down to the Coral Coast and, uh, and the Guava Coast from Carafa and Port Hedland for a holiday. So, um, I'm going there with an open mind. I'm just, uh, you know, bracing myself for what, what might be uh, the occasion. Um, I'm winging it a little bit today insofar as I haven't booked anywhere to stay tonight. Uh, down the Quabba coast, um, the first part of it to the blowholes is sealed and then after that it's 4x4 uh, it's four four only. So after that there are another three homesteads and each one um, has camping. Um, so I'm just hoping basically if I continue uh, down the coast a wee bit or up the coast a wee bit that uh, eventually I'll find a campsite that uh, is quite, uh, quite quiet. Just want to kind of um, check it out, uh, go a little bit off grid because I've, I've been at caravan parks, um, you know, for uh, four nights on a tr trot now. So, no, sorry, six nights on a trot. So it'll just be nice to kind of uh, get off script a little bit. There are, of course, loads of uh, free campsites around that um, I've I've seen and looked at on. Um, uh, Wiki Camps, which is an app that I've downloaded um, for this trip. I think I've talked about it before. Uh, it's great. It shows you attractions, uh, campsites, both paid and unpaid. Um, so at the end of the day, if I get really, really stuck, then I'll just cons consult Wiki Camps uh, again, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Just to show you quickly what the soup. So as we come out of Carnarvon, uh, we've got plantations on the left, uh, bush on the right, but uh, it's still nice and green around here, so let's, let's see how this progresses throughout the morning. So we've just taken the turn off towards the blowholes and uh, Quabba. As you can see, it's a seal road all the way down here. and dramatically the, uh, the coast has, uh, or the, the environment has changed again back to kind of bush from the uh, kind of tropical uh, plantations of Carnarvon. Carnarvon of 
was uh, sitting on the mouth of the Gascoigne. Uh, it's a very fertile, fertile area, both in terms of uh, soil and the um, uh, water. So as on uh, Francois Perron National Park, when I was on the tour and we stopped to look at those uh, Barimas, uh, we've, we've passed over a couple of these now and there's uh, standing water on one side, the other side is looking quite wet but there's no standing water. Uh, you can see in some places people have tried driving on them and failed miserably. But um, just to bear in mind, if we get a deluge of uh, uh, rain over the next couple of days, we might get stuck down here. So uh, keep an eye on the weather forecast. And uh, if it's giving heavy periods of rain, I don't think it will because it's not the right time of year for it. But if they do, it might be uh, wise to head back. This area kind of floods. Looks like they're actually trying to farm it on this uh, on the right hand side here. Yeah. Either salt, maybe, maybe um, places in Wales, for example, uh, Hallon Mon, uh, they use the sea water to, uh, to make salt, sea salt. So they could be doing that here, yeah, I have no idea. I'm just uh, hypothesizing. First sign I've seen in quite a while. Uh, what does it say? Quava Station, Summer Boundary. Right, okay. So the uh, the only downside with the Quava Coast is it's uh, one road in and one road out. So you can't kind of loop out and come out further up the up the coast a wee bit. You've got to come in and come out on the same one. And I've been on this road now for about uh, 70 kilometres. So it's uh, it's quite a little bit inland, you know, to, to then uh, if you want to go all the way up to Nalu, which is at the, the end of the, the, the off-road part, that's like 160 um, kilometers. So then, you know, you're, you're doing a round trip basically of uh, almost 400 kilometers. In my head, um, I'm going to go to Red Bluff today, but um, we might end up going to Nanu, I don't know yet. This will be a little bit of a test, just drop the microphone in the water. <laughs> well done, Evans. So we're at the blowholes at the start of the Quabba Coast. So there's a lighthouse up there, uh, the official road comes down here. This, this part is sealed, uh, you can go down the other side of that hill is a place called the Aquarium, which is really good for snorkeling. Which reminds me I was going to buy some snorkeling kit this morning, I completely forgot, so no snorkeling for me. Anyway, uh, as you can see nothing's blowing at the moment, the seas are not uh, ferocious, ferocious <laughs> enough, although it's still quite uh, majestic to look at. Uh, this obviously isn't the blowhole itself, uh, the blowholes uh, come up through holes in various cracks around you when the, when the tide's in and the waves are really blowing but um, quite uh, picturesque anyway and as always I'm always in awe of the majesty of the sea one day we'll figure out how to harness this energy Alrighty, so I just used my uh, Bush Ranger Max Air Free to uh, deflate the tyres. I've got uh, 25 uh, PSI on the front two and 28 on the back because it's sitting a bit lower. So uh, we're heading north up the Quabba Coast and uh, we'll see what we come to. Whenever you're 
whenever you deflate your tyres, you have to reduce your speed too. So um, if this is a, you know, a seal road uh, that is say um, 110, then you don't want to do anywhere near that. Um, so maybe 60 to 70 on these tyres. Otherwise you risk damaging the tyres themselves. Three mile camp closed until the 14th of March 2022. Homestead camp in Zubin Drain. So I love these little station entrances. They're uh, they're very popular. They're covered in stickers. This one. Uh, this kind of end of the uh, Quabba Coast, uh, Nalu Station, and uh, it's got three different camps within it. Uh, the first one we come to is uh, Three Mile Camp, and right at the top is Tombstones. Now this is the entrance to Three Mile Camp, which is probably the worst the road got. So I just wanted to slow it down slightly uh, to show you here the state of the road. Uh, as I said, this is the worst I encountered, and as you can see, it's really not that hard to traverse. And when you get down to Three Mile Camp, you'll see the amount of cars down there. Um, I don't think anybody had any issues as far as I'm aware. But this is the entrance to Three Mile Camp. Um, right at the moment, you really don't know what's coming. And then you have the shocking kind of uh, civilized uh, campsite at the end, really. It's got a shop and a bar and everything. Uh, no running showers, unfortunately, mind. Uh, you can just see the buildings kind of forming now. And uh, after a long, long drive, I was happy to be arriving. So just coming in here to Three Mile Camp, uh, just parked up quickly to go in and see what sites they had available and then uh, once I've got my little map it was off to find my little campsite. Now I paid uh, a little bit extra uh, for a campsite they had right on the edge of the beach and um, so you can see there's plenty of little campsites around here. I could have had ones uh, a lot cheaper up uh, on the hill to the right hand side but uh, I thought well in this quite special spot why not. A little sweet spot. I've just gone to uh, Three Mile Camp, which is uh, here. This is my little site I paid extra for because it's on the seafront. And that's what I get to wake up to tomorrow morning. Nice uh, swimming beach and everything. Uh, where those cars down there, that's just a road, they won't be able to camp there. It's just about how I want to set up the, the, uh, the Jeep. So I've got uh, Delilah set up. It's on a bit of a slant, but um, I'll live with that, to be honest. <coughs> At the moment, the only shade is on the other side, which is a bit of a downer, but uh, when you understand that uh, tonight I'll be able to light that fire and sit here, I'll sit here, you know, and enjoy that view where the sun sets. I think it's pretty sweet. Anyway, this is uh, Nalu. It's uh, 
quite a few campsites around there, up on the hill. Uh, the one I got, they said, was the last um, waterfront one, which was actually $75 for tonight. Which uh, is a bit much for a campsite, especially one when there's no showers, but um, well, for this view, decided I wasn't going to turn that down. And the campfire as well, I think of the instant showers. <laughs> but yeah, if we get up to that tomorrow, it will be nice. slightly uh, to the south later, which would mean it'll have to come through the tree, which hopefully will uh, shelter us nicely. So just wanted to talk briefly about um, uh, my new kind of um, energy management system that I'm doing. So I haven't changed the equipment I got or anything, but what I've started doing is when I'm parked up, uh, if I'm connected to the power or solar power, then what I do is I set the fridge onto uh, max rating instead of economy mode and then I ramp it up so that uh, well, minus 10 is the freezer freezer uh, target temperature and uh, minus one, um, plus 1 is the fridge kind of target temperature. But the idea being that uh, whilst there's energy coming in and the battery's full, it's going to work over time trying to cool the, cool that down, cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it, and then when the sun goes down, I'll switch it uh, down to target temperature of minus six for the freezer and three for the fridge. I'll put it onto economy mode, and then throughout the night, it'll draw less because it's, it, you know, there's nothing heating it up, so it'll, it'll keep temperature longer. So I'm going to try fire cooking tonight. I'm just defrosting uh, burgers and bacon. And uh, in a bit, after I've finished my beer, I'm going to uh, try and set up the the fire kind of braai system I got. But uh, yeah, just look at that view. I might go dip my toes in the ocean first. Okay, so I just got the fire going, hopefully. <laughs> uh, that's the uh, the little bry thing I was telling you about that just swings you with a fire if and when I'm ready. Uh, we're about an hour away from sunset here, so I just wanted to get the fire going in readiness. Uh, the solar panels are still pumping out about uh, 40 watts instead of 100, uh, but you know, it's better than nothing. I uh, just had a couple of beers with uh, a guy surfer that I met when I come in from Marga River, so um, he's just left now, so about two pints and uh, <laughs> a little bit uh, empty belly, so it's going straight to my head. Set up the uh, my chair and uh, table, we were looking at what will hopefully be a magnificent sunset. Um, yeah, I might set up the uh, 1x2 just to... Uh, yeah, just to record all of this.
quite well. Not a bad burger if I do say so myself. Still got another two there. That, uh, what a night. So as the sun was going down I realised that the sky was remaining clear and the stars were starting to come out so I tried some astrophotography. Now this is early in the night and there's still a bit of uh, ambient light from the sunset but uh, in the middle of the night I got up to go to the toilet and I looked up and I saw the Milky Way in all its glory and wait for it, I took this photograph which I love. Not a bad sight to uh, wake up to today. Either. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what a lovely place to camp. Really nice, slept really well with the sound of the waves in the background. The sun's just coming up now. Uh, yeah, so today we're just going to have a little um, scoot back down the Guaba Coast, um, checking out some things we passed on on the way up yesterday. Uh, with the main name to get to uh, Wara Station, which is um, just uh, below uh, the Coral Bay. Um, I will try and book that one, mine, because it's usually quite busy and highly recommended. So, yeah. So we're just going to have some breakfast there and uh, get cracking. Okay, so change of plans. Just went to start the car and. Uh, it was dead. <laughs> Great stuff. But it wasn't dead dead. Like the electric windows still worked and everything, but the engine wouldn't turn over. So I used my jump starter uh, kit I got from Kings to give it a boost to turn to turn over the first time. So I'm guessing I was trying to use my multimeter, but um, I can't remember how to use it. To be honest, I got this super complicated one and uh, nightmare. Uh, anyway, I couldn't tell whether or not the battery uh, had energy or not. Uh, obviously it did for the, for the windows and whatnot, central locking, etc. to work. So I'm guessing it's uh, the start plugs, uh, spark plugs, um, or um, something to do with the alternator not charging 
probably because well, I don't see why it would have turned over with the, the jump starter if it wouldn't have because that, that suggests it with the battery but then it could be the spark plugs I don't know so uh, I think I'm gonna go back to Carnarvon today and just to see if I can get uh, a mechanic to have a look at it Next week on Jeep Rosco. Uh, I limped back to uh, Canavan. See no evidence anywhere along the bridge of mechanical uh, lifting. All right, good news, everybody. I've got Delilah back.